Greetings and welcome to the weekly horoscope for the week of April 6th. I hope you are safe. I hope that you are using your downtime well to heal, to transform, to get some projects taken care of, whatever that needs to look like in your life. I hope you are successfully being able to tackle those things, especially just here on the heels of this Jupiter Pluto conjunction that we've just had going on over the weekend. It's been a pretty, um, a pretty important 24 or 48 hours leading into this week. So I would be curious to know um, down below in the description box, what were you doing? What did Saturday and Sunday look for you? What is it bringing into your world? What are you feeling that whispering um, of something that you've been needing to take some steps forward with? What does that look like for you in your life? I can tell you that over here in my life, one of the things that Jupiter Pluto energy was really bringing to the surface for me was this idea of shedding youth, shedding youth in the sense of bringing more joy by stepping into this next level of living, um, stepping into this next level of sharing my voice, sharing my experience, the things that I have to talk about. Because there was a very good couple year period here, even in the land of astrology, where I felt compelled to talk about things like finances and politics and and, and stuff like that, but I was too afraid to be able to do it, but it just keeps coming up. It's just like whisper over my shoulder over and over and over and over again. And the universe continues to put people in front of me and in my path that say, yes, come, come here with us. And as this Jupiter-Pluto conjunction happened, both direct, hopefully you were able to check out the video I did, not only on Jupiter and Pluto conjunction, but the video with Shireen Vishmaya. That is a beautiful example of how this is playing out all over the world as well. But also um, to kind of see where this is happening in your own life. Look at the house that it's happening in for you. Jupiter and Pluto came together in conjunction at 25 degrees of Capricorn. So find that in your chart and I would be interested to hear about how this is, is shape shifting for you and where you feel like it gives you some more guidance as we come into the week, okay? So let's jump in here and talk about the week. And I'm sorry if you see me kind of looking all over. I have a different setup, so I'm trying to remember where the camera's at. Have a little grace with me, you guys. I will get it together by the end of this year. These videos are going to be on a level of mastery <laughs> that we will all be shocked about. But I appreciate your patience with me right now. So right here as we jump into this week, I've got the ephemeris right in front of me. As we jump into this week on the 6th, which first of all, let me just say... Happy, happy birthday to you if your birthday happens to be on April 6th. And also, happy, happy birthday to my husband, who you guys don't see Josh a lot, but the stuff that happens for Stormy Grace, not only in support, but literally some of the physical things that get done here, Josh is a part of that. So I want to say happy birthday to my husband because he is definitely a partner to me in this life and, and certainly in getting things done for you guys. So happy birthday and happy birthday to anybody having a birthday on the 6th. Now, the sixth is an interesting energy because the moon's going to continue to transit through the energy of Virgo until the evening time. Now, as we're here, many people are in quarantine or whatever's happening. That moon in Virgo, Virgo is definitely an energy of hygiene, of being clean, of getting things in order, of being of service to one another, right? Doing things with the highest level of integrity. And Virgo is also... Um, an energy that is, is used to patterns. They pick up patterns. This is a mercury ruled energy. So I feel like if you're looking at patterns or you're looking at where do I go next? What's the next action I can take to kind of be progressing forward? Look towards your own patterns. Where do you see yourself stalling or procrastinating? Where do you see yourself really finding light and finding inspiration in something that you're doing? Where is that emotional satisfaction? This is the moon that we're talking about, right? So continue to kind of Think about those things and let them guide you just a little bit. Now, the moon at any given time, because it's moving so quickly, is always kind of touching and tapping in with different planets. But I feel like on the 6th, something that we need to pay a little bit of attention to is that Mars and Uranus are going to be shifting more into position to come to their exact square at this full moon. But we, I believe, will feel it just here on Monday as this moon is in Virgo. And what that can feel like is you're kind of trying to break free. So use Monday 
to see where you can break free from your patterns. Now, of course, in the evening time, the second half of the day, the moon is going to move into the energy of Libra, where we're going to have our full moon happening in Libra on Tuesday the 7th. Now, this full moon in Libra First of all, it's going to be happening at 18 degrees of Libra, so please make sure that you identify that in your chart and see where this is hitting for you. Now, whenever we have a full moon, the sun and the moon are opposite each other, so we'll also have the sun over in Aries at 18 degrees opposite this moon um, in Libra at 18 degrees. Now, this is an exciting moon for a couple reasons. One, anytime you involve Aries or Mars energy, things get excited, right? Like this is also a Venus-Mars interaction just in terms of some of their energies. So I think that this is a nice, um, powerful cycle to consider, you know, what was happening for you at this last Aries moon that we have, and because you may have might have been working or beginning something over there. And as we look at the Libra, this is the we portion. This means now I've got to take something and involve other people in it, or I have to look at the balance of what's been going on and rebalance, maybe take someone out of the equation, maybe stop doing something that is pulling me out of balance. But either way, that sun over there beaming in the energy of Aries is going to represent a new energy, some assertion, some movement, some action, some energy. He's governed by Mars. Now, this full moon in Libra is going to tell us to end something, acknowledge something, or make an adjustment. And hopefully, you will check out the moon in Libra video that I'll have up a little bit later today to get into the depth of what this moon is about. But as we're here on Tuesday, the reflection of balance in relationships, balance in things you find value in, balance in your possessions, maybe a balance in a negotiation, something like that will definitely be on your table because you're looking to end something, acknowledge or make an adjustment so that the balance can return. And, and when you think of relationships this week, you guys don't just think of romantic relationships or business relationships. It's the things that you do that are in relation to each other, right? Emotionally, where are you in relation to the life and the serenity you'd like to be having? Relationally, where are you, um, where do you need to restore some balance between um, something in your body? Think of it in that way as well. You don't have to keep it in just one context, right? Nothing is, is more authentic than thinking widely about how these energies can and are impacting your life, okay? Now, as we continue on the week, we're going to get down just a couple days to the ninth. And this is a day I really want to tap in with you because Venus has moved into the energy of Gemini, which is beautiful. We're getting to experience conversation, exp expressing our needs and our wants. And ooh, a moon in relationships will have you talking about what you want and what you need. But on the ninth, Venus is going to move into the um, pre retrograde shadow period. So what this means is in this area of Gemini in your chart, Venus is going to start to slow down and get ready to make that retrograde as she gets into May. So you may already feel yourself starting to review a certain area, certain topics in your life may come up. Now at that full moon, we had Mars and Uranus in that um, square exact, right? So they maybe gave you a little something that you're under pressure with as well. They created a little bit of warring energy, a little something that's saying, hey, you need to take action here. We need to break free here. So you may also, as this Venus is starting to slow down, be looking at this. You're gaining new information or information is becoming available to you and you're starting to see it. You will review this as Venus takes that full retrograde from May 13th to June. 25th. So just know that this week, all of these energies are helping to guide you. I always say it's the cosmic conspiracy to have you on fleek and moving in the right direction. And I think that this week is absolutely no different at all. Now, as we get to the 11th, Saturday the 11th, we're going to see Mercury making a move. Mercury is going to move out of that energy of Pisces, and I think he's like, yes, right? <laughs> he's going to move into the energy of Aries. Now, Mercury in Aries, we are speaking forcefully. We are making forceful decisions. We are making decisive decisions, right? Because Mercury in Aries means I want to do stuff. I want to make these decisions. I don't want to talk about it anymore, right? I want to talk about the actions that are going to get us to the next thing. And some of these, um, some of your ideas, some of the things you're talking about, some of the things you're listening to may be 
really, really innovative things for your way of thinking or your way of listening. Maybe you're watching a different channel or you're following someone else or you're ready to put information out into the world that's just really different. And I say that because Aries energy is ruled by Mars, who is over in the energy of Aquarius. So he's bringing this idea of something really different, something really innovative or spontaneous to your table. And that's okay because it will be directly linked to this energy of Mercury in Aquarius or Mercury in Aries, excuse me. So you're wanting to communicate about it for sure. Now this energy will be in place until April 27th and then Mercury is going to move on into the energy of Taurus. So whatever it is, know that communication as we're here at the end of the week could definitely be sped up. People are speaking a bit more forcefully. You know, Aries is still ruled by Mars. So I have no doubt that there could be some harsh words even spoken this week. So kind of watch, watch where you're pointing those, those words at. Okay. Now on April 12th, we actually I think it's April 12th. Correct me if I'm wrong here, you guys, but I believe that as we come off of the moon this week and we come off of some of these other energies, I believe Sunday leads us to the end of Lent and the beginning of a new season. So if that is something that is a part of your practice or your faith practice, this is an interesting energy, I think, to um, to be ending your season. And I would be curious, um, whether it's Lent or whether it's something else that you celebrate, what, what does this week bring a culmination, a transformation, or a realization of to you as we get ready to have this like Eastery season, right? Where it's supposed to be this rising, this new rising that's happening. So what's the new information that is rising to you, even if that is not the faith that you follow? So please correct me if I'm wrong, but I do think that Sunday is the end of Lent. So you guys, I think that this is going to be a productive week. It certainly can be. There's all the feels. The world is a little bit different, but I do think our eyes, our ears, and our senses are adjusting. I'm continuing to bring you interviews with people on this channel so that you can hear further thoughts and have your, your heart and your head maybe connect with the information further than just hearing it from my voice. There will be plenty of me just talking to you as well and getting ready to do the moon video. So don't worry about any of that. But I just want to present us all an opportunity to grow, an opportunity for me to face my fear and step out into this astrology community with other astrologers and for me to to do that in the way that I know I feel safe and that I can grow and transform is to do that with you guys. So I hope that you take time to, um, you know, clean the bathroom and turn on a little interview that Stormy Grace is doing and just let information connect with you where it can. Thank you for letting me be your teacher this week. Thank you for letting me guide you. I love you all very, very, very much. And I look forward to seeing you next week. And of course, if you're not following me on Instagram and Facebook already, I do put daily updates up there as well. So if you'd like to go a little bit more in depth into what's going on in the exact day, you can follow me there and I post those and they're shareable and all of that good stuff. Okay. All right, you guys, like this video, comment, share, subscribe. The spring equinox gifts, I have left them up because we are still in quarantine. So if you would like to take advantage, do that in the description box down below. And if not, just thumbs up this video for me because it definitely helps the channel, all right? I love you guys. Bye, everyone.